When we were asked to do the chair, uh, first of all, it's a large chair, as you would say, you know, it's not a chair like this, right, okay. Uh, so, we thought, look, we're doing it in, the, in that particular context. Why not start to reimagine some of the driving forces that led to the building, but this time in a completely different setting? And hence, indeed, that's how we started to work. You know, the boomerang shape of the building became the starting point of the chair itself. And then, of course, a chair has all sorts of other constraints, right? You have to lean. Fine, you turn the boomerang this way, or you turn it this way, or you want to lie down and recline. So we thought it should be a chair that could be used in different ways, in different moods, and therefore in different positions, and we could turn it on the side. So We also knew that the material that we would, we would use was formica, which means that it's about sheets, so we would avoid double curvatures, we would have single curvatures, but in such a way that it would look like it was a much more complicated, complex geometry than it is in reality. Uh, so it would become a quite fascinating object that would also have indentations, so you could put pieces of paper, magazines and so on. So the, the building, the, sorry, the, the chair, you see I call it a building, uh, would become uh, to use a word I often use in, 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 in architectural context, the chair would become multi-programmatic. It could be used in different ways and accommodate different conditions.